All right. So this is Coffee with Katie. It's a monthly event I hold uh, to give back in the spirit of Principle 6, Co-ops Helping Co-ops. And it's a way for me to share what I've learned, for you guys to share what you're learning, and for us to connect and, um, and brainstorm with each other and, and build relationships. So I'm glad you're here. Today we are talking about tabling, and it is the heat of summer, literally the heat of summer here in Florida, <laughs> or in Texas, why did I say Florida? <laughs> I got Florida on the brain. My mom and dad have a house there, and we're working on their insurance claim. Anyways, um, so, you know, we're all, we're all out in public, hopefully, we're, we're talking about our co-op, we're setting up tables, we're displaying information. And in one of our last sessions, people were talking about how they do things at their booth or their table. And so in this session, we'll be sharing some of the pictures that you all have shared with me. Some of you have sent some things in that I'll share with you. I've, I pulled some things from my own history of tabling um, things, tabling ideas. And then we'll have a chance for you guys to share what you do at your co-op, what works for you, uh, what questions you have, um, and we'll go from there. Sound good? Okay, well then let's look at this real quick. Okay, so we're talking about tabling tips. As I said, we don't really have a set agenda. I'll show you some photos and then we'll have a chance to talk. And if I could progress the slides, that would help. So this, uh, this, photo was submitted by the Purple Carrot Co-op, and I was hoping someone from Purple Carrot would be here today, but we don't have anyone here. Um, Darlene submitted this photo, but it's such a cute idea, very easy to do. Um, what kid doesn't want to get their picture taken in their head in a flower or in a, in a vegetable? Um, so I thought that was really cute. Has anyone done anything like this uh, at mm -hmm. their tables? No. No, but I've Great seen it done elsewhere. What's the what's the name for that? What do we what do we call that kind of a Good photo? Question. Thing? What is that thing? Okay, well I'll just um, I'll just make up a name for it. Um, it's a photo face through through picture. Yeah, I'm sure there's a real name for it, Buck. <laughs> we could find out what it is. I'm sure there is, and I I think it's a great idea. I think ideally it would be um, hinged and collapsible so that it readily fits into a, a car trunk. Um, Absolutely. Would have some sort of a framework, um, sort of, uh, to, you know, to hold it up again from the wind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you'd want it to be heavy enough that it's not gonna blow over, but not so heavy that you can't transport it um, easily. Mm -hmm. That foam board, I suppose, would probably work well, otherwise plywood. Yeah, yep, I would think either one. Okay, um, this was yours, Ron. You want to talk about this one? Well, it's it's John Steinman's, really. <laughs> but photo <laughs> submitted by you. <laughs> I just I just bought two books. So this is this if this isn't a conversation piece at your table, it should be. Because when I table, which I do a lot of tabling, uh, people walk up, I ask them, Whitewater, give you a little history, we have a, uh, a small Walmart shopping, uh, a grocery store, and that's it. And so people typically leave town to shop. And I ask them where they shop. And they tell me, they might say Walmart, but often it's it's a bigger store, 20 miles away, maybe nine miles away. I pick up this book and I fan it and I say, would you shop here? And their, their eyes just light up looking at all the photos that are in this photo book. And you know, the title is perfect. This could be ours because as we move through the steps to open our stores, we need, eventually we need a design. And you look at all these grocery stores across the country, some are even in Canada, 
uh, you wouldn't hardly turn down any of them. They, they would be perfect on a corner in downtown Hudson or Bethlehem or Whitewater or wherever you are from. Uh, so it tells a story. And, and then uh, I let them page through it. We had a, uh, one of the people here in, in town uh, said they, they, they had been and looked through it and then they came back the week later and said, hey, do you have that picture book? Yeah, let me look through it. Sure, so she looked through it. Her son works for a co-op in New Hampshire and she found the picture of it. <laughs> That's what so are the cool. Odds of, what are the odds of that? Yeah, I hope she bought a share. I hope she became a member. Yeah, she was she was already a member. Okay, all right. So I told her to take a picture of it with her phone and email it to her son or text <laughs> it or however she sends okay. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So That's then, awesome. then she went wandering around the farmer's market. She came back and showed me the reply from her son. <laughs> <laughs> So it is, it's anyhow, a great conversation piece. If um, you don't have this book and you're going to the up and coming, I'm sure John Steinman will be there and uh, just pick up a book. It's whatever it is. It's well worth it. Um, Katie, could I ask Kathy just got on. Can you back up to the previous slide to that sure. face picture? Yeah. Thank you. I apologize for being late. Oh, oh, that's okay, Kathy. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. This was the, oh. submitted by the Purple Carrot Co-op. I was hoping someone would be on from their store, um, but that's it's cute. a really cute idea. I love this idea. I like it too. Yeah. What kid doesn't want to get their picture taken like that, you know? Here's a, here's an idea for everybody. I've taken a picture of this, Katie, and I'm going to give it to uh, one of our more talented people here at the in our organization that can make one similar to this. So take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, and I'll send the link. I just did, thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> I'll send the slides too in our follow-up email. So you'll have, you could share the slides with, the, with whomever you'd like to too. But absolutely, great idea. So that was the first idea. The second idea is that this could be ours book, having that at your at a table. And I'll add to that too. Um, if you go to the this could be ours website to John Simon's website, he has digital photos you can download. So if you have the ability to have an iPad or a laptop at an event, you could even cycle through photos digitally on a screen um, at a tabling event, which could be kind of cool too. Well, the other cool thing John has, he's got the ability to allow all of us to put this on our websites as a flip book. Yes. If you know what that is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can you can add that to your website. Yeah, there's and he, you know, John Simon's awesome. He's also got his his co-op app finder, um, which is another thing you could have at your table. You could have a QR code to download that app. Um, if you were traveling and wanted to find co-ops near you, that'd be, you know, something we could offer to current members to come by and, and download that app. Um, absolutely. John offers us lots of tools, lots of help. If I could, uh, springboard from those two ideas, <clears throat> they both lend themselves to a practice that I've seen, uh, at other, um, and not, not limited to grocery cooperatives which is to ask people at an event to do a selfie <laughs> and send it to their um, friends from the event. Mm. Here's where I am, here's what I'm doing. Uh, and that, uh, particularly if your event has um, hours to run, may encourage people to come before it closes down. Yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. And that could even be posted to social media, you know, where I am, what I'm doing, checking in at the farmer's market or at the health fair, whatever it might be. But I like that idea. Um, the next photo here is also from Whitewater. Ron, we have two versions of this photo. This is version number one you submitted and version number two. I wasn't sure 
Yeah, which... so ver version one is just simply our grocery store close to downtown. Version two, we are now tabling in the community next to us, Palmyra. Palmyra is nine miles away. They are in the same boat that Whitewater is. It's just a smaller town, about 2,200 people. We've got 14,000. They don't have a grocery store over there either. The interesting thing about it is they go east to the bigger grocery oh. stores, to McQuanago, Delafield, Waukesha. We go west, which is Janesville, Fort Atkinson. The other bigger communities have grocery stores. But they're often driving 20 miles where this one shows we're only nine miles away. So when we open our grocery store, you can see they follow 59 into Whitewater. They turn on Starin. They come down Jefferson and bingo. They don't have to go to the university or through the university. They don't have to go through our downtown to get to our store. It's perfect for Palmyra or anybody you're living around there. And we're having pretty good luck in Palmyra with membership. So, you know, Hudson uh, is probably a good example. Think of anybody north of Hudson, Buck. There's communities up there without grocery stores. I'll guarantee it. Yeah, and, and I, I like these. Uh, I like both of these uh, visuals that you shared, Ron for many reasons, but I, th I think there is a time and a place for us to be polished and professional and, you know, know what we're doing and look like we know what we're doing, but there's also a time and a place for us to be real. And, and, and this is a good example. Um, this is, this to me looks like a grassroots organization trying to show the world where they're going to be. Um, you know, it's not, it's not fancy. It's not, over the top. Um, it's down to earth. It makes sense. You understand it. And um, it speaks to the cooperative nature of us all working together. So I like it. I think it's cool. Well, the other thing, you know, we could do, we could have done a map, sure. but it gets too, it gets too gaudy. This is simple. They look at this and they know exactly where it's going to be. Because you have only um, the key features on your map instead of having everything that's that's out there. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I take your point. Is anyone else in a position that they've shared their location, uh, Bethlehem? I think you are correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, how did that go? How did you guys talk about your location, or how have you talked about it when you're well, tabling? It's been a while now. <clears throat> um, it was during the pandemic, so we announced it um, on Zoom, actually. Um, um, well, we do have some aerial photos mm, yeah. of the area that we showed. Um, we talk about how, where it is, how, you know, it's walkable, bikeable on a yeah. bus line, you know, close to downtown in an uh, area that does not have a lot of fresh produce, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And what's nice is the city is going to be spending like a million dollars on on streetscaping, and we're part of that area. So we've been talking about that a little bit. Um, we don't. I don't think we really have a like a, a map of where we're going to be. Um, we just kind of tell people to go look because it's being built. You know. Yeah, so you can see. Go it. down Broad uh -huh. Street. And, yes, uh, right. And that makes sense when you're in that phase. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. When you can point to the real thing. Right. Have you gone down sense. to see it yet? Uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love the idea of an aerial photo too, uh, because that clearly depicts, you know, mm -hmm. people can easily register, you know, where that is and how it relates to where they, where they are, where they go. Yeah. And I mean, nowadays there's a lot of people that do use like drones and stuff but we do have a, a co-op member who has kind of business that he uses drones for media and so I think he was the first one to get get that for us so you know but cool. if you ask around you'll be amazed there's a lot of people that do that these days yeah you know and that's a good tip overall is just talking to your ownership asking them you know whatever it is that you're looking for whatever it is you're needing um, 
there's a good chance there's someone in your list of hopefully close to a thousand owners that does that. And that's willing to share their expertise with the co-op. I was just having a conversation with another co-op about that who's looking for a facilitator. Um, they have a very tight budget. And I said, I bet you there's somebody in your ownership who has that skill and will be willing to help just having those conversations. Great advice. Okay, uh, so the next couple of photos are photos from Green Top that I, I just looked through my old tabling days photos and uh, pulled up some ideas. Store renderings are a good idea. If you're not in the construction phase or pre-construction, having some visuals of what the store will look like uh, is a great idea when you're tabling. So you can point to, oh, this would be the entrance and this is where the parking is. And this is where we'd hang out and drink our coffee in the morning. And it kind of makes the co-op seem more realistic. Being Adding some fun to your to your tabling uh, with costumes, I think is a great idea. We did this uh, whenever we could get volunteers who would wear the costumes, we would utilize them. Um, these we used a lot in parades and at tabling events, um, but they're fun just to have, you know, if you can get a, a willing volunteer to, to wear the costume, it definitely draws attention to what you're doing. And games. We had this game that was pretty easy to, to uh, put together and transport. It was, it's just an old ladder in a series of baskets. And we have this, a, a co-op owner who made this slingshotty thing that is uh, on a wooden base and it has a little, you know, a little lever on it. And you put, we had these um, vegetable bean bags, kind of like beanie babies, but vegetable size or vegetable shapes. And kids would slingshot the vegetables into the buckets. And we had, you know, green top grocery tattoos or pens or, you know, trivial little things that we would give to the kids, coloring pages, you know, depending on what bucket they got it in. Sometimes we had healthy kind of all natural candy, depending on what was going on or what kind of event we were at. But this is a great way to get kids involved if it's a kid friendly event and to get the parents at the table so you can have a conversation with them about the co-op while the kids are playing the game. And that's it. That's all. Those are all the, the pictures I shared or I, I included. Um, so I'll stop sharing and um, we'd love to hear from you guys what your thoughts are, what's working, what are you using, what's not working. So um, I, I don't know if anybody saw in the chat, I put that oh. I didn't bring pictures, but I brought props. Oh, yeah, so, even better. Um, <laughs> uh, just a, just a, a few. Um, so, so new this year, all of them are new this year and one of them or a bunch of them. And you mentioned about the bean bags. These are all these little, uh, crochet, awesome. um, fruits and vegetables. Yes. And you sent a picture of these. Yeah. Did I? Once Maybe. upon a time, I think you did. So, yeah. Yeah. I got them on Etsy. And what I find is a great way to have conversations with kids. Like if um, I've, I've talked to the tablers and I'm like, well, if there's kids, you know, you could talk to the kids with this while we're talking to the parents. And I usually, you know, say, so what do you think this is? You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it doesn't matter what they say. I say, yeah, it could be, you know, because this could be a pumpkin or it could be a pepper, you know, so you know, I really don't make them wrong. I mean, this is like a banana, but you know, you might say it's corn. Corn, maybe. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, so that's been, and you know, this is, oh, I don't know if you see that, but anyway, so that's kind of fun. Um, and people always ask, you know, you know, where did you make those? And I, and what I also did is I downloaded the instructions on how to make them all and many others. And I always say, oh, this might be a class that we could have, you know, in the winter after I learned how to make them. <laughs> They're categorized in easy, intermediate, and advanced. So easy would be my speed. <laughs> um, so that was kind of, kind of fun. And um, so one of our co-op members said, uh, anytime someone joins at the farmer's market, we should have a cowbell and ring the cowbell. And so we have a cowbell now. And we also now ring it when an, a member comes to stop by, if when we remember. Yeah. Um, and so not only do we take uh, a new member's picture with our join us, you know, yard sign mm -hmm. next okay. to our vertical 
sign about the Bethlehem grocery store and a picture of many of us um, in it and one of our farmers and stuff like that. Um, we, we also ring the bell now. You know, I so, love that bell. I think yeah, that's a great so, idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, this is not any big deal, but I want, I mean, it's not really, I sometimes it's a conversation because I do bring it up. So I used to have all these little rocks that had nothing on them. And in case it was windy and I put them on everything. And it turns out one of our newer members was an artist. And one day she brought a few rocks back, like her own. And they had all these great little photograph uh, pictures and paintings and our name on them. And so I usually say, oh, one of our members made these for us. Isn't that nice? You know, just different chatty stuff. Um, kind of shows that, you know, the cooperation part of um, the business or not the business, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it, yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. So um, those are the three, like the newest ones that we've used this year. I mean, we do use the book. I, I love a John Steinman's book. I love the idea of saying, would you like to shop here or whatever? Mm-hmm. On? I was like, oh, that's a good way to uh-huh. um, say, I mean, I'll show it, but I don't quite say it like you do. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so th- those are our three new, new things this year. Totally cool. We're Thanks, having fun. Kathy. We're having fun. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Those rocks are awesome. What a great idea that of that artist to yeah. paint them. I mean, yeah. why not? Yeah. I know. And then she volunteered to table. So love it. Yeah. Three well, times so far. So all that's... of us need rocks. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> that wind is something, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, let's talk about that for a quick second. Like, what about um tent anchors? Like, have you, do you have trouble keeping your tent from blowing and what, how do you, what do you do with those? How do you, how do you keep it stable on windy days? Sandbag. Um, yeah. yeah. Sandbags or milk jugs with water in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Luckily we haven't had too much trouble. Um, you know, few, few windy, a little bit windy days lately hasn't been bad this, this uh, season. So yes, yeah, too bad. We don't have um, you know, stuff shaped like fruits and vegetables. That yeah, that'd weeks. be cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> we could but, come up with a whole business line just for you, tabling stuff, couldn't we? We could yeah. be selling fruits and rocks and anchors <laughs> and all kinds oh, of things. I want to mention we do have an early rendition of our store. And we're there, we always have to remember to tell them that this was the earliest rendition. And so now the entrance is going to be over on this part because we don't have a current one because they change the architects changed the design a little bit. But the outside, you know, the facade really looks very similar to it looks exactly like what they're putting up there. It's just the entrance ways and things are a little. So, I mean, it gives you more um, you know, stuff to talk about. A conversation piece. Absolutely. Yes. yes. To make sure they understood and yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. When you have the games for the kids, do you give them prizes? We did. We had tattoos, green top grocery tattoos that are real inexpensive and, um, mm-hmm. and you can get them with, you know, more f- healthy dyes, um, you know, fruit-based dyes rather than toxic things. And we would use natural, we could give away natural candy when we had that in supply. We also had some pens, you know, like um, ink pens and, and, and that kind of notepad things that we would have on hand. Uh, stickers, we had uh, window clings for your car. We'd give those away. Kids sometimes like stickers. They're not gonna put them on their car probably, or but they would put them on a water bottle or laptop or something. Um, So yes, we would give prizes away. And sometimes we wouldn't. Sometimes it'd just be for fun. Coloring pages. We had coloring pages too that we gave away. Um, Something we did recently was have a strawberry shortcake for sale, like for $5. And then some people would come for the strawberry shortcake. And then we would talk about the co-op and give them a brochure. And um, I guess you could do that Every time you could sell brownies or cookies yeah, or, Ron, cake or you guys sell uh, something, don't you, Ron, at the farmer's market? 
Yeah, we do. One of our board members and his wife. Now, who really makes it is the question. <laughs> My guess is Cheryl makes it. Uh, but yeah, sometimes we just give them away. You know, or a donation. Yeah. And, you know, amazingly, people will give you $5 for a cookie when there's <laughs> probably a dollar would have been plenty. <laughs> you know, so and would... you just... You just have a uh, a little sign there, uh, and then not only that, she made she puts the recipe there, which this day and age is somewhat important because is it gluten free or is right. it mm -hmm. you know all the different uh, issues of nuts and you know so yeah she has the actual recipe so that people look at it and go wow. This is a pretty good cookie for what's in it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think having the recipe is a great idea because um, I, I, as someone who has food allergies, you know, I, I have to yeah. trust that when something is labeled a certain way that it, it really is that way. But if I can see the recipe and see exactly what you put in it, then I can decide, okay, is that something right. that works? Because if you just have a cookie, a lot of people don't take them because, yeah, they don't know what's in it. Yeah. Right, right. And then she makes it colorful too. You know, it's uh, it's not just a pen or a typed recipe. It's it's colorful. Yeah, she's she's marketing it as well. Yeah, she's nice. a draws marketer. attention. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the recipe you also even, gives. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You could even, sorry, you could even have um, the recipe printed and handed out to people. Like if they really like the cookie, make it at home. Sure. Yeah. And maybe do something with the food color, a little ad for the uh -huh. food co-op on the recipe page too. We've had we some all... just, we've had some just take a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> We're all looking for ways to, to give something to the visitor to our table to take home that will remind them, remind them. Mm -hmm. especially if they're not yet a member. So one that will have the QR code that goes to the sign up page on our website or that has the address um, that uh, tells them where they can find the application form to join online and pay through Square or whatever method you're using for that. Um, so if you're not giving away pens that have that information on them, uh, something else that has that information is a way that uh, <clears throat> either people who haven't joined or people who are already members, owners, uh, can give to their neighbors to become owners. So that yes. uh, is something we're looking for. I, I, I would did want to say that I think the most important thing about tabling takes place before you even show up to start the table, and that's the preparation. Uh, and, but immediately when you arrive, people like those around this call are in a position to help the others with a um, summary of the messaging today. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's what we're saying. And uh, mm -hmm. just don't assume they remember it from last time or from mm -hmm. your newsletter. Just say it again quickly. Um, and, and, and what are today's goals? Mm -hmm. Are we, are we trying for, are we hoping for five members? Are mm -hmm. we hoping to get uh, some people on our email list who aren't ready to join, but they're ready to receive our monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, and and if you have a list for collecting emails like that, which you probably do, uh, I always write my own name on it. I, I never mm -hmm. want a page that has never blank. Is blank. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'll fill it in myself, or yep. I'll make up a fictitious oh, good one. Good idea, absolutely. Yeah, so they're not alone. They're not the first. Don't nobody wants to be the first. Yeah, we use Sign Up Genius. We've just recently gotten into it uh, as a way that our volunteers can mm -hmm. sign up for we their tabling that. assignments. And we try very hard to have short shifts mm -hmm. so that nobody has to be on their feet for more than two hours. Mm -hmm. And we really discourage chairs. If mm -hmm. people bring a chair, we try to try to get them to keep it folded. Now, it doesn't always work. You're going to have some, they're going to have to have four hour shifts and they're just going to have to sit. But if you can possibly keep people on their feet mm -hmm. and if possible in front of the table, mm -hmm. not yeah. hiding yep. behind it. Yep. And, and no sunglasses. Right. Uh, a name tag. Not that 
we're selling anything or running for office or that. But if you're wearing a name tag, people, you have a certain more credibility to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. You're not hiding anything. You're not like that police officer who doesn't want anybody to know his name. Who, who they are, right? Yeah. Nasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think those help. In and then you go around the rest of the day wondering how come people know your name. That's me. <laughs> and you're wearing the tag. And then you get home <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night and realize, oh my gosh, I've been oh, wearing a name tag all name day. Tag I know. I've yeah. been like, now I realize, but sometimes it'd be like, well, I never find something like, oh, thank you, Kathy. And I'm like, Wow. <laughs> I never leave home without uh, grocery flyers in my truck and a plethora of name tags. So I can put on the right one for the occasion. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. And Kathy, you've had your hand up. Yeah, I, I do. So um, in, in Bethlehem, uh, we cannot give away food mm. it's very strict the health board the health, health, call, department health department is mm -hmm. very uh very strict about uh selling or giving away food um to people that outside of your organization mm -hmm. now we could have a potluck if only our members come mm -hmm. in a place privately but once we invite others then the health department you know it yeah. gets tries to get involved in that so um so i not so obviously that's not a problem in the places where you live uh the other thing is at our farmers market you know we have to remember like etiquette in that we can never um be in competition with any of the farmers or the makers right. that are selling in there because we do like we have a cookie maker it sells cookies so i could never give away cookies because then people might take my cookies and not buy from their cookies that small mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. so that that's something that um because we are talking about once we're open we're going to continue to table so you know well maybe we can bring something to sell or something and i'm like ah you know you gotta kind of there's a lot of things you have to consider um when you do that, if you're in a farmer's market situation, you know, mm -hmm. and, yeah, you um, want to look you know, at what, what, um, gaps in the market there might be, right. Like what right. could you bring that's missing? That's not mm -hmm. being provided. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, absolutely anyway. a good point along with, um, Buck's suggestions uh, when I, when I'm tabling, I like to ask volunteers not to use their phone. I ask them to put their phone yeah. away yeah, or for the duration. Um, absolutely. You can keep it handy and you can look, you know, you could check it for emergency, but ask if you need to use your phone, ask them to step away from the, from the tent, from the table to do that. And the other thing I did, um, as well, I found that volunteers often would carry their bag with like, they'd keep their purse on them or they'd keep their backpack on while they were working. Cause they, I mean, cause we're in a big public space and they weren't comfortable leaving it wherever they were going to leave it. But that sends a message to the person that you're talking to that you're going somewhere that you're you're not mm. here you're not part of this you you just you have your bag on you're walking through so I don't know if I'm talking to you as someone at the farmers market or if I'm talking to you as a representative of this organization yeah, so I asked uh, volunteers to keep their bags in their car or under the table or out of sight um, uh, and th that those seem to be good tips. And there, there's also one other thing I did, um, Buck, related to messaging. You know, when volunteers show up to table, um, I had a folder with FAQ and messaging and brochure, what, whatever we're talking about, whatever we're giving away, I had that folder available and I would hand it to them and say, okay, here's what we're doing today. Take a look at this before we get started and make sure you're comfortable with this. Um, which I'm not surprised you have a folder. <laughs> You're so organized. <laughs> but it helps. So what that does then is it frees you up. So you can then start doing whatever else you're doing. They can Working read the material while you're, you know, finishing getting set up or talking to whomever's coming to buy. And then something else. I was going to say something else about that. Um, and of course, you're you're then reaching the visual learners along as, as well as, as the oral oh, learners. Yeah. Yeah, in absolutely. your volunteer uh, crew. Yeah. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. People learn differently. Yeah. Yes, Ron. Another important thing is a business card. Mm -hmm. Here's our business card. 
And on the back side is all of the phone number, email address, that type of thing. But I, I think somebody in our club designed this one and it's, it's attractive, you know, yeah. it's got our logo, but it's got a shopping bag full of groceries. So we just have it sitting on our table. Now, this is another example of why we need rocks because it's <laughs> just a little business card that phew, it's gone. Flies away. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but a business card is good, especially for those, whether they join or not. Uh, the On the backside is also our website. Everything that they need to get re in touch with us. Yep. So now it's interesting. I'm the only one that has one. But uh, as we get closer to our capital campaign, I think everybody should have one. Uh, maybe not every board member, but, um, you know, we have board members that don't necessarily come and table, but everybody that's at the table should have one. Well, at least there should be a general one for the co-op. I agree. Um, and, and business cards are inexpensive and relatively low impact in terms of the environment. You know, you're not printing this big, huge, multicolored paper thing that's going to get recycled someday, hopefully. Um, but it's small. It's a takeaway. You know, when they find it in their bag or their pocket or their wallet a week from now, it'll remind them like, oh, yeah, I wanted to look that up. Um, I absolutely think it's worth having business cards. Uh, yeah. to, take away. Yep. Yeah, Kathy. Um, so I thought, I thought another thing that I do, um, and this is only in the last couple of years, I didn't do it early. So of everybody, oh, maybe it's even longer than that, but um, everyone who signs up for the emails, I get them into the MailChimp, you know, into our Google thing. Um, and somebody else puts it in MailChimp. But then I take all those and do a blind copy to all of them from the Ooh. info at bethlehamfood.coop. Usually that evening, I try to do it, you know, or on that weekend. Uh -huh. And I you say, thank you for stopping uh -huh. by to chat with us at the Bethlehem Food, you know, at the uh, Rose Garden Farmer's Market today, yes. which is the subject line. Yes. And then, you know, we're in the body is like, we're, we're glad you did. And then mm -hmm. I talk about the, you know, um, you know, uh, we, you know, it was so nice to see you and we have two new members from today, but everybody's been added to the email list, but the new members will be getting their packet in a couple of weeks. And then I tell them anything that's going to be coming up, like if there's a social, like, you know, at a brewery or a mm -hmm. ice cream shop, um, you know, I, now we're taking applications for uh, board members. So I let them know that, you know, I give them this, and then I give them um, if you haven't looked at our website, you know, I encourage you to do, and I give them a direct link. And then I said, oh, but if it's time, if you think it's time to join, here's the link to join. And then I thank them again. And it's, um, you know, cooperatively yours or mm -hmm. incorporation from mm -hmm. me. And so I always think of that just like another touch. That, yeah, um, love, love, that, love, love, love. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. And what I do, you make it easy. You you don't have to rewrite it every time no, you copy, copy and paste, paste and edit get rid it. of what yeah. you just have to really make sure you read it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you put wanna... the current events in there and yeah. 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 Just oh yeah. And I tell them bit. when mm -hmm. their next newsletter's coming, you know, you signed up your next newsletter's coming on Wednesday, August yeah. 2nd. I love know. that. I love that. I think that's fantastic. And that, that brings up a whole other conversation that we could have, and we have had um, in this in this session before about uh, email drip campaigns. So those new yeah. people who are yeah. just signing up, they're ripe for a drip campaign of sorts, that being the first one. So you've now signed up. The next one is, here's a cute video about co-ops and why we love them. And then, you know, a, a series of emails that culminate hopefully in them joining the mm -hmm. co-op. Mm -hmm. um, and so- that's fantastic, Kathy. And I think it's even better that the first one comes um, kind of organically, like that you're sending it, you're writing it to, to those people. It's not system generated. It's not mm -hmm. fancy. You know, it's just an email from you telling mm -hmm. them, hey, thanks. Good to talk to you. Glad we got to meet. And here's what's going on. Um, I love it. That's a fantastic idea. 
Thanks. Uh, We've the had other volunteers um, donate um, native flower seeds. And so in the appropriate season, we give out little seed packets that have our stuff on the, on the outside of it. In the uh, early part of the spring, another member uh, grows little plants, starts a whole bunch of uh, vegetables and tomatoes and you know all that kind of stuff. And so we, we give away those little seedlings. Um, they don't lend themselves quite so well. Well, we've used a bag that has our information printed on the bag, actually. Mm -hmm. So we have giveaways. And then one person made a thing kind of out of a shoe box, cut holes in the top, that were about the size of a carrot stem and and took a bunch of carrots, I think it actually was, and and painted the tip of one of them a different color. And then kids could pluck one, you know, and if they got the one with the color on the bottom, then they won the prize. Oh, or they is won that? a certain prize. Uh -huh. If they picked one that wasn't the others, they got a got lower a value prize. Uh -huh. Yeah. How a cute. Consolation oh, prize. It's cute. So easy and simple and kids would love that. That's great. The other thing you mentioned, Buck, I remembered that I think is a fantastic tip and something I encourage all of you to do is to set a goal for your tabling event and to talk about the goal with who's there. What are we doing today? What do we want out of this? Do we want three owners? Do we want five new email signups? Do we want to talk to five people who've never heard about the co-op? What is it that we're after today? Um, because you can't, you can't achieve a goal. You can't make progress if you don't know what your goal is. You're, you're not moving in the right direction. You're not moving in the same direction. Um, and so it's better to, to have that conversation with everyone who's there. And then when you, you have shift changeovers and new volunteers reminding them, hey, our goal is three owners. We already have two. We only need one more. I'm glad you're here kind of thing. So that I love that tip. Great tip. I love the bell idea. Uh, I'm going to bring a bell to yes. the next time. The uh, bell is fantastic. Mm -hmm. yep. Draws attention. Everybody's going to look. Ding a ling a ling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's really funny because it reminds me of growing up, even though I grew up in the suburbs, when it was lunch time or dinner time, whoever was home had to go out with the cowbell and walk all the way up one <laughs> side of the street and ring it and all the way down the other side and ring it. So, like, I was like, ah, cool. Time to come home. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Chris, how about you? What do you think in there? Any ideas or suggestions or thoughts on your end? Um, I don't know. When you mentioned about the goal thing, I like it to be more organic. I mean, if somebody's ready to join, they will. You know, we get new members, but we get a lot of really, we get a lot of people signing up for our newsletter That's and awesome. it's only a few more touches and then they're members. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know about setting goals. It's just get out there, be friendly and put out positive energy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every, every co-op has to do what's right for them. Absolutely. And what works, what works for, for your co-op. Um, so I think you're right. Being friendly is a huge piece. And that's not something that we've talked about. Um, but eye contact and a smile are critical when you're tabling. It is my pet peeve to walk through any kind of event, be it a farmer's market or a health fair, anything like that, where there are vendors and, and, and tabling happening. And the people working at the booth are sitting in a chair. I like the idea of no chairs sitting in a chair behind the table on their phone, looking down. And I, I just want to shake them and say, why are you here? What, you're, you're, you're wasting everyone's time. You're wasting your time. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're engaged with each other. You know, they're in a heavy duty conversation with each yes, other. Yes, talking to each other. movie or something. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, absolutely. So, so looking outward and, and So smiling. one thing though, I mean, I, I'm always, almost always in front of the table, uh -huh. you know, collecting people. But sometimes I realize after that whole conversation, I haven't actually brought them right to the table and got them to sign up an email. That happens once in a while. So, so I've had to try to stay a little closer to the table mm -hmm. to try to, you know, because with your chef, you know, sometimes you get into all these great conversations, <laughs> all this positive energy is going. And then I, you know, yeah. So, yeah, because they're, you're in front, they're in front. 
and they, then yeah. they can just walk away. Right. Uh, so right I see right, that. Right. I can see so that. I have happening. to be like, yeah. ah, I have to, you know, always remember that there's, there's, yeah, there's a goal here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, besides just having positive conversation. And if there's a flow to the traffic, uh, I like to be on the downstream end of the table. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm standing in front of them as they move past the table ah. and I can, I can move out in away from the table and thereby channel them next to the table. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you know, that's while great. we're talking, it's just quality. Yeah. subtly. Uh -huh. um, and then they're right there where they can sign. Fill yep. it in yep. if they so choose. Otherwise, we yeah. let them go. Of course, you get a bunch of people. You may be overwhelmed and you can't uh, can't do any traffic management, as it were. Right. Yeah. You know, I thought That's of something good. else with the book or with your email sign up. Um, when I was doing tabling, I would use a book, a notebook, like a nice bound thing that you just flip to a new page and start a new list. Mm -hmm. But I would use that book uh, to my advantage. Um, as a way to keep track of what's happening at the event. Oftentimes, you know, we might talk to 50 people. And one of them tells us, Hey, I've got a, a coffee shop downtown. I'd love to do an event with you guys. And we could do a coffee with the co-op thing. Would you call me sometime? Oh. You know, and, and so then I'm trying to remember, okay, who's that guy? And when do, how do I follow up with them? And so I would flip to the back. So I was using the front page of the notebook and the back page of the notebook. So I'd grab that notebook, flip to the back page, write down that person's name, coffee shop, follow up mm -hmm. or whatever, a note to myself, put it, close the notebook, put it back down in front of the um, group. So that then at the end of the event, I'm taking out the front page and the back page of the notebook and, you know, doing what you are doing, Kathy, sending an email to the folks on the front page and then doing the follow-up work that usually there's something that generates from an event. Right. Somebody says something that needs followed up on or a question got asked that we've never heard of before. And we don't know the answer to, and we got to send them a note with the answer. Um, so that was a good, that was a good tip for me or a good trick for me to keep track of all of that, all those conversations. It's a great idea. I like yeah, that. I try to always wear a shirt that's got a pocket, like Ron's mm -hmm. got a pocket on, <clears throat> and I, I carry those very small notebooks, a little spiral types that'll fit in there and the pen will hook on it yep. so that I've got it right at hand to capture you can the note jot down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. If I don't write it down, I don't remember it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a an interesting thing happened on Tuesday. I'm a golfer and uh, one of my best buddies, golfing friend, I never really asked him to join the co-op. You know, he's my friend. So we're off driving off to go play about a, probably a 40 mile ride. And he goes, Ron, how come you haven't asked me to join your co-op? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, his mom is a co-op. His sister's a member. Uh, but I didn't want it to impinge our friendship, right? Uh -huh. Well, guess what? His business is joining. He and his wife are now joining. I said, Nick, I don't want to force the co-op on you. I want you to want to be a member. Right. You know, it's yeah. it's a fine line for a friend. How how well do you know the person? Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. But sometimes uh, we can be overbearing. <laughs> and turn them off even mm -hmm. you know i sell insurance and that's the way everybody knows i sell insurance i've been doing it here in town for 40 years well everybody knows he goes yeah but ron you're the face of the co-op and i go well i don't know about that he goes come on you're the face of the co-op well okay maybe in this guy's opinion i am but I'm not sure that's true of everybody in our town, you know. <laughs> they think I'm an insurance guy. Right? So, yeah. So, so what's the a, what's the moral of that? The moral is we shouldn't assume that our friends don't want to join the co-op. We should assume they do want to join the co-op. Is that the moral? Well, Buck, sometimes it's a dance, right? Yeah. You know, 
You don't want to be too overbearing, you know, because he's a good friend. But uh, anyhow, the moral of the story is it worked out. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. It wasn't and, too late. No, I suppose you could just talk about your own involvement with the co-op without saying, would you join? Because I, I can see that it's awkward. You don't want to put pressure on people. It, then they might feel uncomfortable with you. And that's the last thing we need, right? Yeah. But Sometimes you could just mention- living your, living your co-op life proves to them that this is a good thing. You know, you're happy, you're excited, you're interested, you're passionate. They'll see that. And uh, clearly they did, Ron, in this case, and, and yeah. they wanted to join. Well, here's here's the next tie-in. So I was mentioning, we've got 37 different businesses in, in town uh, that have joined. I said, you know, here's an example, Little Red Farms, outside of town, grass-fed beef, pork, uh, chickens, they sell eggs. He says, hey, I'm interested in uh, a quarter quarter beef. I said, well, I'll send you their link. Well, then I got on their website. I sent the leak link. I sent the form that they fill out. When you buy a quarter steer, you got to pick the choice of cuts that you want. Well, they had a form for that. So anyhow, now, whether he's going to buy it or not, I don't know. But I said, well, hey, they're a good member of us. We're probably going to feature their their products in our store. Maybe not on the uh, uh, floor, per se, but push them to uh, Little Red Farms if you're looking for grass-fed beef, local, all that kind of stuff. He goes, you know, Ron, he says, I'm glad I'm going to join because that's what I want to do. I want to support local farmers. I said, well, our membership is full of it. (laughs) That's what we do. I gave them them a list of our members. It's the name, it's their website, and their phone number. So that if they want to learn more about Little Red Farms or whatever the business is, they got all the information right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great idea. And, and sometimes co-ops will form a business directory, co-op owners who also own businesses in the community and, and link to that on their website. Um, yep. And sometimes those business owners even offer discounts or uh, benefits to co-op members when they come into the store. So those are things you can do before the store opens that provide value both to the co-op owner that has the business and to our general ownership. So that's a great connection. That that would be a good way to recruit businesses to look at local farms and maybe organic or not organic and just say, uh, why don't you become a member and we'll promote your business and we'll we'll probably sell your products. Yeah. You you were talking about, Ron, you were talking about people who are already members, but it would be, that would be a way of recruiting businesses too, if you just found Mm -hmm. out who sold stuff or produce things in your area. Yep, absolutely. The other impressive thing about having businesses be a member is we were talking to the city manager who was fairly new. He's been here probably eight months or so. Uh, We were mentioned, we were bragging about 800 and some members. And then I said, not only that, we have 37 business memberships in other words businesses in and around whitewater that are members of our store and he said wow he said that's important because that you've got the business community behind you he said you know that's going to help in me selling this to our common council when we get to the point of how much are we going to support this co-op grocery store and he's talking about money you know so, yeah, now it was fortunate that I brought that up. It wasn't like I thought it was a great idea, but it was just something that I thought he ought to know. And then he, his feedback was, wow, I could have skipped that and really blown this. <laughs> right? Good thing you included it, Ron. Good thing. Are you well, going to be asking for an alcohol license, Ron? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, that's another thing the city council will will uh, control, you know. So yeah. you want oh, their yeah. support there. Yeah, that's true. We that's we have point. to create a new 
a modified ordinance probably in order to uh, make one available at Hudson. Oh, I think we have one set aside. I shouldn't say we. The city has one set aside for us already. Oof. They're well, in Pennsylvania, they're ridiculously expensive and we cannot afford. And there's one available too. It's $300,000. Good oh. point. So we can't do that, but there's, there's Pennsylvania is like very convoluted. So what we're going to have to do is make individual contracts with uh, microbreweries and wineries and and the, and but it, it will be their contract yeah or, you know like so that they'll be able to so we'll only be able to sell the want contracts that you know those companies it's just ridiculous wow. it's like 300 dollars a year or something but it's wow. silly and then yeah, and then in order to sell a lot of alcohol you actually have to have 32 seats so in a small co-op, you can't have 32 seats. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, it's a problem. But we're we're figuring out how to at least have some. And then then it will be local. So you know it's sure. kind of our yeah. mission. That is good. So I can yeah, sell right. bread, you know. Right. Yeah. Whitewater's in Wisconsin. So the only people who don't sell alcohol are churches. <laughs> <laughs> and they give it away, which right? raises it's another free. thing. If you sell uh, things at your table, be sensitive to the possible need to collect, to remit sales oh, tax sales to your tax. Department of Revenue. Yeah. Wisconsin's uh, t uh, very aggressive on that. Yeah, that's a good point. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we're one o'clock, folks. Uh, great conversation. Always good to talk to you. Glad, glad to have you here. Um, I'll send the recording out. Feel free to share it with whomever you'd like to. And uh, if you have ideas for the next topic, let me know. Thank Thanks, you. Katie. Terrific. Thank great. you so much. Have a great day, everyone.